The chemical industry is a very big industry. It's about 7% of the world's gross national product. Um, and it employs about 10 million people. And 30% of the chemicals that are made on the planet are produced in Europe. And we make between 40 to 60,000 chemicals commercially. And in general, there's about 1,000 new ones added each year. Um, the, the main thing in place that protects us is a rather old form of toxicology, which tends to look at adult toxicology, tends to look at high dose toxicity. What we're finding, those of us who work in developmental toxicology, is that actually it wasn't just a few bad actors amongst the chemicals which we should worry about, but it, it, it's many chemicals are by chance able to interfere with cell signaling systems. And they don't work by having an acute high toxicity effect, they work by hijacking development. And then um, if, you, if, you, if you look upon it that way, then we have created ourselves quite a, a nasty problem, which for some chemicals would go away quite quickly if we just stopped making them. For others, um, it's going to last for hundreds of years. So the PCBs, for example, polychlorinated biphenyls, they will be around for hundreds of years because they're so persistent. Um, that's a very long-term problem. But for other chemicals, um, such as the bisphenols, uh, we metabolize them quite quickly. So if we stop making them, that problem would go away. So we have various options. They're ubiquitous. We've all got them in, a, in, our, in ourselves, in some level or other. So there's no escape. Um, everyone's exposed. Um, and, you know, for some of them, it depends to some extent on what you eat. So for things like dioxins and PCBs, the higher up the food chain you eat, the higher the fat content of your diet, the more you'll get. And because we don't get rid of them very quickly, the older you get, the more you'll get. For others, it depends on um, where you live and what you do. So if you, um, you know, if you live out in the middle of nowhere and have your own well and, and things like that, then you, your exposure will be lower than if you're, if you're using communal water supplies and, and um, etc, etc. I mean, so it, it, it's horses for courses. It depends where you, some of them will depend on what you eat, some of them will depend on what you drink, some of them will depend on where you live. Personally, I mean, I live in a Victorian house which is built largely with non-toxic materials and I choose to have very, very few chemicals in, in the house. I mean, our main cleaning agent is vinegar, which is totally neutral environmentally and actually a very good cleaning agent. Um, I, when I get, I get a bunch of medical students every year who come on a course called Environmental Pollution and Health, which I run, and the first thing exercise I set them is to go home and write down a list of all the chemicals that they have there in cosmetics and cleaning agents and, you know, the garden in and they come back with these enormous lists and then we sit down and start going through the toxicology of some of them on the on the way on some of these search engines and and that's quite an eye opener but we you see we're taught from a very early age about biological hygiene when you go to the toilet you wash your hands because that's otherwise you may we're never taught the concept of chemical hygiene. It's just assumed that, oh, they've been tested and they're perfectly safe. But I think it would be very good to get into people's minds uh, a concept that you don't unnecessarily expose yourself to X, Y, and Z. I mean, okay, you may need to at some stage. It may be important to do that, but, but you don't do it unnecessarily. You minimize unnecessary exposure. And much of our exposure is unnecessary. We just do it gratuitously.